Hey, I am Joey Stooch. I hope you guys are doing fabulous today. Well, it is no secret I have a severe disability. Maybe you don't know this, and that's awesome. I have a severe disability caused by a rare disease called FOP, where my muscles and tendons turn into bones. To give you an example, here is my arm. You see, this is the highest thing it can go. To the bridge of my nose. And this is the lowest thing it can go. 20 years ago, I could put it lower, but since then, I can't really move, I have very limited range of motion. I don't know what my head feels like or really any part of my body. Enough of me, why are disability people lonely? I will be the first to say that my disability is on the extreme levels, but my opinions are so totally valid. For one, we don't look normal. Something is wrong with us. That translates into the real world. When you picture a human or ask to draw a picture, you picture them with all human parts. You know, the arms, legs, eyes, nose, etc. You picture an average looking person with no ailments. That is everybody's baseline. Then we have a class of disabilities. Disability can range from physical ones that you can see, such as total paralysis, to invisible ones, such as chronic pain, however, however it is caused, by injury or just your body playing, being mean to you, for seemingly no reason. Some are physical, but your brain is fine, while others are mental, but you look fine on the outside. It is such a huge train. My disability is clearly apparent. I am also mentally insane. I like to pour milk first, and the cereal, or watch the last five minutes of an episode, so I know what happens in case I die halfway through an episode. Obviously, I'm kidding. I watched the last 10 minutes of an episode to get even more context. My point in having a disability is it makes you less attractive. A red flag, if you will, just like if somebody pours the milk first, then the cereal. You don't want to associate yourself with that madness. People can be super great, but can be super selfish. Selfish isn't the right word, but they have their standards and do not believe a person with a disability can fulfill their needs. Can you blame them? Would a person rather hang out with a physically able-bodied person or a person in a wheelchair? A person with a disability personality has to be pretty amazing to overcome what they can't offer due to their disability. We have to try harder to compensate. In my personal experience, I was trying so hard to please people and be awesome and funny and amazing that after a while I realized I wasn't a problem. I took a step back and realized people next to me were trying way less and getting way more out of relationships, or at least it seemed they were getting more out of them. To me, every failed relationship, I had to up my game and felt I was the problem. It took me a while to realize that I wasn't the problem in the relationship and they didn't like me for X, Y, and Z. I have to accept it and move on. If they do not want to be in my life, that is on them. A relationship works two ways. I know if I didn't have my rare disease, then I strongly think I wouldn't be having these lonely problems. But here we are. Now a person will point to other people or YouTubers like Cole and Charisma or Shane and Hannah. Check out their YouTube channels in the description below. They're actually pretty awesome to watch and seem like cool people. For the people that do not know, there are couples and one have a pretty severe disability and in a wheelchair while their spouse is physically normal. It is awesome that they have found each other and killing it, but there are only two couples. There are millions of disability people out there who don't have a following or can't even get 10 likes on a post. Having a disability is undesirable. There are few that have broken the ice and that's amazing, but there are so many who are deep in the ice and will most likely never break out, no matter how hard they try. Another reason is really isolation by lack of choice. I am grateful that I wasn't sick often or had to stay in hospital for long periods of time. When you are in the hospital though, you are stuck in a room with no chance of being really social. When you are in a hospital, you don't have the energy or not in your best state of mind to want to make friends. The older you get, the more isolated you become. You can be friendly with your nurse, but that doesn't really count as a friend. Once you leave the hospital, they are gone from your life. If you are sick often, then you have less time to be social and just worry about your health. Even if you have friends, not all of them will stick around. While yes, they have their own lives and other worries, few or even no one will want to stay in your life and care about you. That's just how it is. I read somewhere or heard from somewhere 
is that a lot of the people you know are, or so-called friends is due to geographic convenience. Look at your classmates. You hang out together because you are in the same class. Once you don't have class together, the friendship fizzles out. Nothing really happened. You just aren't forced to be together and nobody or both people don't put the effort to maintain the relationship. That's fine. It is unfortunate, but it is fine. You and the other person make new friends in their new classes. If we have another class together and you pick up where you left off. Otherwise, you will probably never see the person again. Also, meeting the right people comes down to luck. You can meet the right person and have an amazing relationship. Maybe you met your soulmate but had a bad first impression and that is the end of that. Having a disability also creates a domino effect to other aspects of your life. Having a disability can create so many negative variables. Is it disabilitating or more of a nuisance? Are you able to work or are too disabled to work? For all that being said, having a disability will create a deterrent to be invited to places or outings to a regular crowd. If you're able to find a niche crowd that not only likes you, but don't care if you have a disability or can accommodate, and that is awesome. If you can't, then it starts a domino effect on your life. You will be going out less, which increase less opportunity to make friends and genuine connections. Think of it this way. You're more likely to make a decent connection if you meet 100 people versus 10 people. Not only do you have to look over your disability, but actually like you as a person. I hate to break it to you, but some people just do not like you. You could do nothing wrong and just being yourself. Some people get along great and some do not. Even if they have a disability or not, you cannot force any relationship. To continue the domino effect, meeting less people leads to less growth in yourself. No matter how high your self-esteem is, you need outside validation once in a while. There are also many kinds of people out there that have your ideals or don't. If you are stuck at home with your family, and they don't like dark humor, you will have to go along with their likes. It is hard to fight against a system when you can't leave. You will always like dark humor but no person to share with, so it creates anger and sadness within yourself. That sadness and anger manifests within yourself the longer you are in a predicament. It then creates a vicious cycle of being angry with people that seems unexplainable. The people around you are really doing anything wrong just being themselves. It is just you being stuck in terrible predicament and only you can try to resolve your own issues. Basically a downward spiral. The isolation can be the cause to more mental issues such as depression that is more undesirable in a person. The disability can be the cause to everything and if you didn't have it, a lot would be better. More likely to go outside, more chances to find happiness and to break out of the rut. It takes a strong-minded person to keep it all together and not go truly insane. I think the brain just lowers the threshold of what is normal and forced to accept it. There is a part of me that wants to go out and explore and I know there is happiness out there but I am stuck here. I know there is a different normal out there that would make me a lot happier. I just hold on to hope that maybe I will experience that different normal. Being in isolation creates inexperienced people, whether it's a relationship, or social cues, or just being a decent person. I know I'm caught in this too and I don't like it. Let's talk about relationships, both platonically and romantically. I know a lot of people are isolated tend to say a lot before the relationship has been created. I was talking to a girl with the same disease as me, and one of the first things she told me was she was on her period. I was like, okay. She backtracked and apologized and tried to laugh it off with TMI. I am pretty open as such, but it wasn't the right place or time. Sure, it could be a one-off, but you just don't tell anybody that in the first few messages. What if I started each video with, hey, I'm Joey Seuss, and I am on my period. Would you keep watching? Could it be she really wanted to tell someone or an insecurity? Or is it a bad choice at the moment? Maybe if she tried with others, she may have gotten a hit. How could I respond to that? Word, me too. Guess we are best friends now. Uh, I have terrible luck in meeting people who are on the same wavelength as me. I've been to a camp of special needs people and everybody has a weirdness to them. 
I didn't know they won't be able to blend with the society. I talked to the counselors more because they were the only ones that were the most normal. But since my disability is so severe and an environment with a bunch of other special needs people or people with a severe disability, I was grouped with them automatically. I couldn't break out because I was always stuck on their level. I was clearly the brightest of the group. That was my problem that I was just grouped with them and couldn't break out no matter how hard I tried. Also, when you meet a new friend or really a person, you get really excited to be talking to somebody new and you want to tell them everything. To the other person, it can be overwhelming and a huge turn off. Relationships are weird that the more you talk to somebody, the less attractive you become. The more secretive or have a mysterious persona you portray, the more desirable you are. It makes sense that you'd rather talk to someone that is busier and could be texting anyone in the limited free time while they choose you versus someone who has more free time who just wants to chat. It makes sense, but it doesn't make sense. Weird. Anyways, isolation can create a false normal or a different reality. My family is quiet during dinners while other families are laughing and having fun and less modest. That's why it's important to get experience and to leave the house and experience new things. Something I really try to do. Isolation can lead to bad health too. I experienced it too, and it can lead to your skin just looking bad. You can tell if a person is out more versus indoors all the time. It is more than just having a tan. Being happier and outside can lead to clearer skin, a better complexion, and less overall health problems. My skin seems to be more prone to getting dry skin. You would think that staying indoors would lead to better skin, it does for a while, but then it goes downhill. Also seems to get sick easier because my immune system is just not as strong just from dealing with stress and unimaginable situation. Also it seems you care less about yourself, you start wearing oversized shirts and sweatpants. While yes it is easier to be dressed in them, it just doesn't look good, and you can totally tell if somebody is wearing a lazy outfit with fashion in mind or if it's easier for the person or the carer. To recap, having a disability creates a deterrent to people wanting to be friends with you. The so-called unattractiveness creates a domino effect or more red flags when your personality starts to dwindle. You start losing yourself and become even more weird. It can lead to even more health problems and can lead to more unattractive problems. Once you are deep into it, it is very hard to get out. There are going to be people that say, if I saw you in real life, I'd be friends with you. I refuse to believe that. I know you mean well and so forth. There is another YouTuber called Special Books by Special Kids. A guy named Chris Ulmer interviews people with mental or physical disabilities. A thing that most of the guests say is, I wish I had more friends or something along those lines. Then there will be a comment that says, I want to be your friend. Well, you can. These days, people have a social media and you can say hi directly to them. I can guarantee you that they will not say hi. People's intentions are great, but pay attention to the effort. Maybe you won't get along, but I bet you didn't even say hi to even know. Sure, it may be weird to reach out to a stranger. It has happened to me. Sure, I will respond, but it depends on the person and flow of conversation if I will pursue the relationship or just parse their matches and move on. There are some disability people who have great personalities but stuck in really shitty predicaments. There are some dicks out there too. Could their disability be the cause of who they are? Sure, after a while you have to take ownership and self-evaluate if it's my situation and personality to determine or is it one or the other. A mix of insecurity and lack of experiences and bad luck and you can see why a lot of disability people are lonely. Hell, there are people who are normal and still have trouble making friends. Even people with millions of followers have difficulty, so it is hard for them to make friends. Imagine how hard it is when you have a disability. Thanks for watching and I will catch you later.